Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we'll be diving into a ghost megachurch. What is a ghost megachurch? Well, we will answer that question for you. It has nothing to do with Halloween. That is a pure coincidence. Ghost megachurch and First Baptist Church, Orlando, Florida is a ghost megachurch. I'm going to explain why and we're going to dive into what killed this church. Spoiler alert. Branch Covidianism. So that's what we'll be talking about today because I'm gathering data on how this ideology is killing the church. Now, don't get me wrong. FBC Orlando is not a church I would recommend because David Youth is not a pastor I would recommend. He is Big Eva to the core. So we'll dive right into that. But, you know, Ghost Mega Church, David Youth, FBC Orlando. Now, don't forget to like the video because this is a pretty important video and subscribe to the channel because I like to think this is a pretty important channel and uh, you know check out evangelicaldarkweb.org for more. So let's dive into a background on this church. So David Youth was selected to be the president of the Pastors Conference of the Southern Baptist Convention for the canceled 2020 convention which the, this convention was taking place in Orlando so that made this a very convenient arrangement. However, it never came to be. However, on the pastor's conference, there's a lot of issues already coming up from that uh, event. And kind of a shame because he was stacking egalitarians on the uh, roster there. So it got called out. It was a big issue back in the day. But uh, obviously with the canceled conference, we never really saw where that issue ended up. And according to Wikipedia, First Baptist Church Orlando has 16,000 members. And I know what you're saying. This is Wikipedia. But Wikipedia probably has the best uh, aggregate information on you know mega church numbers in the United States as far as trying to get an estimate of where churches stand in their attendance. Probably the best you're going to get. And it has been updated recently. So David Youth is Big Eva. He is an SBC elite. This is a huge church, and we're going to get a little bit more into that afterwards. But let's check out their attendance at their flagship location um, early 2020. So this is January 14th. Not the most crowded, but uh, this is... I, I'm not sure which service this is because they didn't live stream every service. But as you can see, you know it, it's got a decent crowd. This is a pretty good shot here. I, I want you to keep in mind this shot right here. This is a pretty packed arena or, you know, uh, specifically this area. Pretty packed up in here. Even this area is pretty densely packed. This area is more densely packed. I want you to focus on this screenshot right here for comparison because this is the best one I could find uh, in early 2020. This is March 3rd, 2020, and I'm not particularly sure which service this is they have an 8 or an 8 30 or they they have a 10 and they have an 11 30 i believe so they have three different services i'm not sure which one this is i don't think it's the 10 which i think might be their busiest so this could be their eight actually i, I would reckon to say this is probably their 11 30 or 10 because of how the stage is set up because I've seen a lot of their uh, live streams. So that that's my basis for going off of this. Uh, yeah, this is it. And as you can see in their 830, they have like a chorus rather than a praise band. So again, it, it's one of those. And those are what I believe are their two busier sermons. So is this a 16,000 member church? Probably not. Probably not. But... Uh, as we will see for, for comparison, it's not what it is now. It's a lot more than what it is now. So this is another angle. So let's talk about uh, lockdowns. Uh, during lockdowns, FBC Orlando would take PPP loans. They would take between $1 million and $2 million in forgivable PPP loans from the government per the CARES Act. And this is the And this was data I reported on. Uh, I believe in December of 2020, I reported on this data and I outed the mega church pastors that used it. David Youth was so happens to be one of the several pastors I reported on doing this. So this is pretty important that I can just go back and snatch that. But as you can see, um, Southern Baptist, 
uh, date approved was April 10th, which is a little on the early side. I mean, as early as it got was about like, like April 3rd or April 4th. That was as early as it gets, but April 10th is still on the early side. And over t- and 208 jobs were reported to be sa- or to be sustained by these loans. That's also uh, important to note. So this is a huge church. One to two million in PPP loans. There weren't that many mega, uh, Eva, big Eva mega churches that took these. Obviously, this is a pretty busy church, and you know maybe it's not sixteen thousand members strong as they as Wikipedia likes to say, but it was it's a big church, undeniable. So after Branch Covidianism takes hold, um, you know many did not return. That that's the clear message that I want to hone in on is people did not return. Although FBC Orlando did not implement a mask mandate on congregants, reopening came with a heavy push of altering church functions and activities. Volunteers appeared to have been under a mandate to wear a mask. Uh, and they have some pretty cringy videos about this. They have a lot of cringy videos on their YouTube channel. I don't have the time to show you those um, because you, you got to like weed into it and search filter through it but their welcome back uh consisted of we're gonna have face mask everywhere for you we encourage you to bring yours and wear yours and we'll have some available for you but it didn't appear that they were making people wear them they are definitely making their staff wear them doesn't appear like they're forcing children to wear them but they certainly promote that as well it's in their propaganda images and stuff like that so they were really trying to normalize fear and branch covidianism in their church and it shows fbc orlando also played up the easter at home uh and you know we talk about how churches that you know went to live stream only did not you know people didn't actually watch the stream so we talk about how people didn't actually watch the streams when churches went to live stream only and i think that holds true for FBC Orlando. I think that data is really strong when you look at this church and their metrics. Now, again, YouTube is only one place where you can go for metrics. They might have streamed it on Facebook as well, but uh, the numbers aren't favorable on YouTube at all. So we can dive into some of those later. Uh, and again, many did not return. That is a, That's a clear message. So this is uh, October 4th, 2020. Very empty. This is far emptier than this. They went from this in March 3rd to, you know, six months later. That is like a third of the crowd. Maybe 40%. But you can see there is a massive drop off. In this crowd, especially in that left section where we're going to see a lot of the, these sections here, massive drop off. So, uh, again, you know, 1300 views on this live stream. And this was a 1030 service. Another uh, this was the week afterwards. So this is October 11th. And it's a little bit more crowded, a little bit more crowded. Uh, again, we're back to October 4th because I didn't put these in correct order. I tried. Uh, September 27th, even emptier than the, uh, the earlier one that I just brought up. So this is even emptier than that, I would say. So September 27th. And also has fewer live stream views. So let's also fast forward more recently. Uh, so October 17th. Just some crowd shots here. That section's, again, a pretty good benchmark of emptiness. Uh, again, these are pretty favorable shots for the church. That's just These are shots that are just available in the stream. They have a pretty predictable cinematography to their credit, which makes this a little bit easier to do a head count. Uh, this is a pretty good shot here. You can see it's pretty empty up in... This whole section is empty. Almost, it's very sparsely populated. This section right here, and that's like the money section. That's that's the section you would want to sit in, and it's just flat out empty. So uh, we can go to this one. This is, I believe, this was one of the most favorable shots that I have. 
This is October 17th. It is their 10 o'clock service. Uh, and as you can see, the live stream views are pretty depleted. Uh, so for October 17th, it was like 428 on their, uh, oct yeah, for their 10 o'clock. This one, how does this have more? Oh, uh, this is their, so that was their eight, their 1130 was 428. Their 10 o'clock was 755 and their 1130 had 1200 views. So inconsistency on the views, but it doesn't add up to anywhere close to 16,000. And again, uh, just a point of order, uh, as someone who does live streaming, YouTube stream counts are very favorable in puffing up numbers. For instance, if you refresh your page, you know, while streaming, that counts as a separate view. So that happens all the time when you're live streaming something, especially on a desktop or a browser or anything. Easy thing to do, easy way for that number to be artificially inflated. It's just, you know, the nature of the beast. So uh, the stream count's not the most reliable metric, but it is the metric that we have. So just keep that in mind. This is a really empty shot. This is October 17th again at the 1130. Uh, back to the, this is October 24th. So this is a week ago. Uh, again, really empty spot right here this is the best speed in the house and this is when the service has people speaking in it so it, it's slightly before the so songs are about to start but you know people sh it's right before that's about to happen uh so you know they're celebrating people in the crowd so people are talking during this event this this takes place like two minutes after the previous picture so it's not like people nothing's happening in the sermon uh this is another shot of the crowd this shot right here, super empty. Like, look at this. Look at that. Look at that. In fact, it's so empty that it actually looks like they're uh, they're closing off certain rows to force people to sit up close, which also makes the stream count look or the uh, crowd count look better. And one thing I don't get is all these reserved seats, as if you need to get a reservation to sit to get good seats in this uh, church, which is nuts. So again, this is a more favorable shot because people are standing. Uh, this shot is, looks better. This is at the end of a service where sometimes, not always, but you can get a shot of the crowd. Uh, actually, this is their 4th of July. This is June 7th, uh, 27th. So this is actually like six months ago. And you can look at the crowd a little bit more packed than it looks in those recent shots. Uh, again, back to June 27th. So a lot more people showed up for June 27th, August 8th. So let's, uh, go back to August 8th. Very sparsely packed. This is, I believe they're 830, 830 AM. Again, another shot. Older crowd by looks. Uh, this is back to October 24th. This again, uh, I'm just trying to get an exhaustive amount of screenshots just so you can see a picture. Like, I'm not selectively uh, grabbing screenshots that are favorable to the narrative that I'm trying to cast. I grabbed whatever screenshots I could in the stream. And there's only a few sh parts of the stream where you can grab screenshots. And it's usually in the beginning or the end. But this time I found, like, during part of a song. Uh, again, in the very beginning, empty. This is a better shot of the crowd. This is still October 24th, so a little over a week ago. Uh, better shot, more favorable shot while singing. Again, this is not terrible, but keep in mind, it looked like they were cutting off certain rows. So this is yesterday. This is uh, October 31st, so Halloween service. If they do that, I don't know if they do a Halloween service. Doesn't look like they did a thematic service, which is good. You really shouldn't do theme services for uh, things like Halloween or Valentine's Day. It's just lame. But it looks like they section off some of the uh, the rows because, as we saw in like the previous pictures, so a week ago, so a week ago, you could see that these top rows were like cut off. 
Like, you see that band saying, don't sit here, basically. Uh, so, as you can see, we, we can't quite trust their metrics. So, this looks packed, but everyone's forced to sit closer. Because good Baptists know not to sit in the front row. It's just what we do. We don't sit in the front row. So, uh, this is dark, but this is actually one of the most crowded shots. It's dark, though. But it is more crowded than a lot of the other shots. This was at their, um, again, this is their 1030 service. So, this was their 830. This was their 1030 it, it's a little bit more crowded. This one looks more crowded than the 11. So the 11 goes back to being very sparsely packed. So, and, that, and that's it. That That's all the screenshots that I got. But just a reminder, this is what it looked like. It looked like this. Doesn't look like there's any rows sectioned off here. You got people on the top, people on the top, all the way going up here in the middle in this money good seats section right here, or the best seats in the house are right here. And it's packed. It's packed. And then you go to, uh, this is just a better picture because it has brighter and it's just, it's very framed to make it seem like everything's fine. Everything's fine. The house is burning, but everything's fine. Whereas you look in the past, they had way wider angles and it showed more of the auditorium. It showed more of the, uh, the auditorium. They don't, again, the cinematography is kind of the same for each of the three sermons and they don't, and they kind of hide how empty this place actually is. So they got to be feeling it. I don't think this church is not feeling it. They are definitely feeling how empty this building has become because it was just a building. Again, you know, when we said that church is more than just a building, it's the physical assembly of the saints. They thought that the congregation would stay together without physically meeting. They were wrong. It's clear that the data did not support that. On the real-time results, the real-time results is when FBC Naples shut down and embraced Branch Covidianism, people didn't come back. Now, there are multiple reasons for that. Let's talk about the top two. Uh, number one, they cultivated a culture of fear because they never catechized their believers to not live in fear. And... Instead, um, these, uh, I, I say believers, because that could be an over-assumption, but they cultivated a culture that was too like the world, and that culture capitulated to fear because they weren't catechized and discipled. So they lived in fear when the time to have courage came about. And in that, they didn't come back because you reap what they, they, they're reaping what they sown. They sown fear, they reap fear, and thus they don't want to come back. Uh, the second answer is they disgusted the actual people, you know, maybe they're not believers, maybe they are believers, but they're, they're Florida men, you know what I'm saying? They don't care for this Branch Covidian nonsense. They, you know, Ron DeSantis is their governor, because again, this is Florida, this isn't New York, this isn't California. This is Florida. This is Florida. This is, you know, their governor is the most aggressive against Branch Covidianism in the country. Maybe not at that time, but, or maybe not during October of the October of last year, but currently in 2021, he's the most aggressive governor against COVID, and it's not even close against Branch Covidianisms. I should say, but also against COVID when it comes to getting monoclonal antibodies for his people. So with that said, those are your two options. And I think both of them, again, these are churches that have shown bad results. They didn't disciple their believers or their members. So their members capitulated to this new religion called the Branch Covidian cult. They, become, they became cultists and they became self-righteous in social distancing and staying in away from large gatherings. You know, that's their self-righteousness. Or the people that were, you know, maybe they were Christians, maybe they weren't, but they're disgusted by all this nonsense. And again, the, this is the church ruining its witness by being like the world. They weren't salty. They lost their salt. They lost their flavor. And, you know, salt preserves is a preservative and they just rotted. And that's what we're seeing in FBC Naples. This is a big Eva church 
a you know a template that the Southern Baptist Convention wants to create in every city in America. Pretty much, it's you know this is a good church for them because uh, again, David Youth plays ball with the SBC. He's an SBC elitist, and again, toted the same line, peddled the same lies. And took that government money. Also worth noting, he took that government money and peddled that federal government narrative. So, you know, he's in Florida, so there's no excuse. No excuse. No grace for that because you're in Florida. Uh, You don't have a tyrannical governor like John MacArthur has. And by the way, no excuse for those Californians either. Bible's pretty clear. We are together. We don't let the government shut us down, shut our worship down. That's not how Christianity works. That's not how the church works. It's disgraceful to even suggest such a thing. And, you know, they are reaping the consequences for it. And to be fair, I'm not going to say it couldn't have happened to a better church, but this is a pretty good church for this to have happened to. Because David Youth, again, he was on the wrong side of the SBC issues and all that. So uh, it's good to see this mega church crumble it's it's crumbling and they they got to be feeling it because they change their cinematography to hide like they used to just show their congregation and how many people are in it but they're kind of masking it a little bit more as we get on to more recent uh videos uh so or their recent live streams and just one more note about their live streaming success like the most they got was like around five thousand which again, I already mentioned that live streaming numbers are a little puffed up because of the nature of view counts and how view counts are calculated on a live stream. But again, this is a church that claims to have 16,000 members. Does it have 16,000 members? No. No way. Jose, does it have 16,000 members? Does it have 8,000? No way does it have, does it have 8,000 members. We're lucky if it has 4,000. I would think it has around 2,000. That's where I, That's what I think. Maybe 3,000, but it does not have... I don't think it has 4,000. So we're in between two and 3,000 in my guesstimate. But as you can see, Branch Covidianism killed this church. That is the main message of this video. And I want you to show that to other people that Branch Covidianism... Being like the world during these times will kill your church. So pastors should, you know, if listening to the Bible isn't good enough, maybe they should actually think about their own self-interest. So that's what I got to say about that. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support this ministry effort, you can become a subscriber over at evangelicaldarkweb.com org slash join don't forget to check that website out as well articles almost every day pretty good articles if i do say so myself and let me know what you think about what i think and i will catch you on the next one